Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a screenwriter's rant on Resistance 1942, a World War II movie uh, about the resistance in France. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books. Links in the description. Uh, comedy horror in South Jersey. That's the Pineys. If you'd like to support the channel, you are supporting the channel. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, upvotes are always appreciated as well. So this seems like a pretty standard World War II movie. The angle is, it's about this guy, uh, the, the, the guy from the uh, Princess Bride playing. He's, he's back, man. This is the second movie I've seen him in. Um, he's playing the guy who uh, runs the, like a pirate radio station basically in France telling everybody, oh, don't worry, we're going to beat these guys. And uh, he runs around Germany and hiding everywhere. And uh, it's all about... And Judd Hirsch plays like a patriarch of a family who's hiding because he's Jewish, I assume. And yeah, here they, they're hiding in different ways. Um, and it's all about, you know, occupied France. Uh, Jason Patrick's in it, too. He, uh, I hardly recognized him. Uh, there, there's the Princess Bride guy. That's not Jason Patrick. He plays like a guy who, they kind of look similar. They kind of look similar, but... Uh, I think I can find a shot of him. Resistance, 1942. Where the hell is he? That guy I don't know, but he plays the Nazi. The, the, the main Nazi, I should say. There's a few in this. Oh, there he is. That's Jason Patrick with, like, blonde hair. So, and uh, these guys, guys kind of look similar. I kind of confused him, but he had a mustache, so I was like, oh, okay, he's got a mustache and glasses. So Jason Patrick doing a doing a different term as a uh, different turn as a um, kind of a you know more like a Schindler guy he's in the regime but he's helping he's helping people right so he's probably part of you know a sympathetic guy yeah here he is look at him he looks totally different in this uh, it looks good though it looks good um, so he's part of the regime working for the Nazis but, um, you know, he's helping the resistance secretly. And then the Nazis have to... The big the big uh, story here is the, the Nazis come to a dinner in his fancy house, which they probably took for some poor Frenchman. And now they're talking about Nazis and that the people hiding with them have to pretend to be his staff in order to survive. Um, so, story by Matthew G. Hill, Landon Johnson, and Jonah Hirsch. Oh, I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if it, uh, he's related to Judd Hirsch. Maybe. Burning down, burning at both ends. Is that uh, the book that it's based on? It doesn't say specifically, but maybe that's the book. They wrote the book together. Written and directed by Matthew G. Hill and Landon Johnson. Okay. So, so co-director, co-writers, and then Jonah Hirsch. So I wonder if Jonah Hirsch wrote the book and then they, they took it, took it and, and rewrote it. Or maybe it was a play. Feels like a book. Feels like it could be a book. Feels like it could be true. Um, hard to say, though. Hard to say. Greer Grammar. Is that a relation to Kelsey Grammar, I wonder? Uh, you know, a lot of people in Hollywood are related to each other. Um, so, I mean, it looks decent. It looks well done. Uh, you know, is it is it bringing much new to the table? Meh. I mean, the radio angle's kind of new kind of a new angle but you know they've done so many of these and i grew up in the era where there was a ton of world war ii movies let me tell you oh my god they were coming out well they had come out and i mostly i saw them on the reruns on the weekends but so many world war ii movies it's like you know there's almost no piece of world war ii they haven't made a movie about i mean i i looked at operation mincemeat which actually was a you know a true story and Kind of a new new angle, but then somebody pointed out they had made that one too. So they've kind of covered it all in World War II. So, and, you know, I, I think this is going to be a good film. I think it'll be very watchable. But for me, it's something I'd watch on the History Channel. You know, I wouldn't go to the theater to see this necessarily, simply because I've seen too many of these. Right? And so what little new stuff is here, you know, I'm sure it's good but it's like uh, you know I've seen it all before 
I know this backwards and forwards. So, you know, Act One, the Nazis are probably already there since it's like Resistance 1942. That's like, you know, them starting out in 1942. And then it's about the radio guy played by the Princess Bride dude. And he's sending people messages and it gives them hope and great and that's all good and then uh it's about him trying to survive and 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 things escalate as the war goes goes south for the nazis and then um eventually in act two it's about them jumping from place to place trying to trying to hide the judd hirsch and the, his family and the radio guy uh and they have some close calls and then the climax would be that dinner at Jason Patrick's house, like they they somehow get him on board, and um, he's helping them, and but now they have to pretend to be the 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 servants in order to survive. And uh, Judd Hirsch apparently blows their cover, like gets angry or whatever, and then you know who knows what it turns into. Who knows what it turns to in that. And there's some crying in it, so somebody probably dies, and some Nazis probably get killed. It's probably a happy ending, unless it's based on a true story, in which case it could have a very, you know, dark but kind of hopeful ending. Like, oh yeah, a lot of these people were killed, but here are the ones that survived. So, I mean, you can't really have a positive movie, per se, about World War II unless you have one of those sort of Steve McQueen movies where it's like, ah, these guys are heroes and they kill the Nazis and win World War II. Um, so I think this will be, you know, a drama. It'll be fairly nuanced. It looks well produced, looks well acted. You know, there's going to be those moments like, we have to hide. I, I can't hide you, but you must. You know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, this was a, this is a movie I'd see. I'd certainly see it. I wouldn't go out of my way to see it. Because, like I said, it's just so many of these movies. Unless, you know, somebody told me, oh, you got to see it. Like, this is a totally new thing, a new piece of information, or, or a new take. You know, like, I hated Inglorious Bastards. I just hated the ending. Because it was, yeah, it was a new take. But it was historically, spoilers, inaccurate. So, like, I just thought, eh... And then at the same time, I've seen so many of these movies, I, I feel like I got half my history from them, right? So, in that respect, it'll probably be better than some of the movies I saw, which were probably ahistorical for other reasons, you know. Uh, this one looks pretty historical. So maybe, maybe it's really on the money. Maybe it's not exaggerated for the drama or the action. Uh, but I doubt it. I mean, I'm sure there is some exact, there's always a little bit of it, you know, all these close calls that really weren't that close, right? So, but it looks good. Resistance, 1942, uh, another World War II movie, looks like January 10th, there's, yeah, yours to own January 10th, okay? I don't think I need to own it, but eh, I wouldn't mind seeing it, so maybe sometime next year I'll take a look. And that's it for Resistance, uh, the real Resistance, by the way. Smash like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, check us out on BitChute and Rumble.